damage on that. One of the features of Sergeant's Miniatures game is the story deck. And in a single turn, you end up with three story cards to make the turn up. If you end up with the bottoms matching, uh, you end up with an event. So let me give you an example here. I'll pull this one off the top. And swap these around. In this case, you'd end up with a terrain cause on phase one and an effect on phase two, and that would cause a random event to occur that would happen at the beginning of the turn. In addition to that, the turn sequence is on the cards. So it tells you exactly what you're going to do in phase one. So you have a choice between shoot and then look. You can pick one of the two. This one happened before that one, so literally the turn sequence rewrites itself every time you play the turn. And the random event system is built in. You may get no random events during a game, or you could get three, four, five random events in a game. And there are things that happen typically to you or for you in the battlefield as you go along. Um, so that sets your turn sequence. During the turn, you're going to play action cards. And your action cards are made up right here. Of shoot cards that match the shoot action on the story card. And in that case, Vandenberg, whose guy it is that has this particular card, and here's his mini right here. You can see he's got the same uh, dog tag and name. This uh, mini's fully painted pewter. Um, but this allows Vandenberg to take actions, plus it allows three other soldiers to also shoot. So in this case, Vandenberg could shoot once, and three different soldiers could shoot, or Vandenberg could shoot once here, could shoot again here because he's one of the soldiers, and then two other soldiers could shoot. In addition, in this case, Vandenberg may sight a near soldier, nearest enemy. So the way I would do this if I was playing the game is I would use this action first, sight an enemy soldier, shoot him, and then have all my buddies shoot him too. All right? The hit checks are built into the cards also. So if you look right here, you've got long, short, and close. If, if I was shooting at close range, I don't. it says miss, but I actually get one hit. And the reason is, as you get closer together, you get a better chance of getting hits, so you count all of them above. At short range, I would count this short range and the long and get a hit. So in the case of this card right here, I would get one hit at short because I would get the miss at short and the hit at long. But if I was at close range, I would score two hits here and here. And as you can see, the cards are easily divided into look, shoot, hide, and move. Find a look card. Some editing may be required here. Okay. There we go. Got to look, shoot, hide, and move are the four kinds of actions that are taken during a turn that matches the story card actions. And what's really cool about it to make it easy to play is, if you look right here, all your charts are on the map for the various action you're taking. So if you're taking a hide action, you use your minus two modifier where it applies. If you're taking a shoot action, you take the minus one. And for all the squares you go through, you simply add them up and that gives you your, your um, adjustment to your combat. Fast, easy to play. You can play it and, and uh, it got players as young as 8 to 10 that pick this game up and play it easily. And it's challenging enough to be played at the World Board Gaming Championship. All right, so we'll give a quick example here of, first of all, the squares. You notice that Sargent's is played in squares. So there's a square here. And this square over here is bigger. This one's 5 inches, this one's 10. We call this a landmark. The landmarks all put story cards into the story deck. So if you get this bridge, which is the uh, LaFerry Bridge, you also put the landmark cards and the story cards for LaFerry Bridge into this particular deck that you're playing. Uh, movement is done in inches. It's measured literally with the ruler here. And so it actually changes where a guy happens to stand. So if I'm, if I'm standing right here in this square, and I'm shooting from here to here, I take a minus one, and this has no modifier, so there's only a minus one on my shot as I'm shooting here. If I'm shooting at this man over here, I've got a minus four. 
because he's standing inside of a built up area that has a lot more protection. So in this case it would be minus four, minus five. So it's just that easy to figure out what the modifiers are. They're straightforward, straight line. What you go through is what you count. Movement is if I have Danworth and he's moving five inches, I take no modifier for move. If this was over here, I would take a move of minus two. So I would have a move of three inches. From in here, I have a move of five inches if I have a five inch move. So I can move forward. And then you put the dog tag inside of cover. And the reason you do that is if the man is spotted, he can try to hide next to that bridge above him. If this guy is here and he's spotted, he's standing in the middle of the road, so he can't hide in plain sight. And no matter what you do, you're going to stay spotted. So it's a nice and straightforward system of that. Um, that's pretty much the movement system all in a nutshell. The other thing I think would be pins because the game is about that hard. So I'm going to show you what happens when you have a guy who's pinned. If I've got Danworth. So if you couldn't get all the way in, you're back here. Or if you want to be here. So you notice here, here's Danworth's card. If Danworth is pinned, normally Danworth could rally one, one soldier. So if his card came up as a high and he was trying to hot rally himself, when you're pinned, you round all numbers down, you have them and round them towards zero. So this one becomes a zero. So Danworth is one of the few guys around that, that can't rally himself. Somebody else has to rally him. If he goes down on the ground, he's staying there until the fight's over. Um, that pin also applies to the toss distance, it applies to the close range in inches, it applies to the number of squares, and to the long. So while he's pinned, he has a long of four, a short of one, a close of four, a toss of five, and his walk distance is only two inches. That's the way pins work. You just have all the stats on the card. That's it. So we'll take cover three. This is Sergeant's Miniatures game, and I want to thank you very much for taking a look at it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Basic set that we sell is ready to play in the box with painted miniatures for $90. And that includes everything you need, including the rules, which is only 20 pages. 14 point type, very easy to follow. And uh, everything you need is in the starter set to play the game. Thank you.